জিনিসগুলো নিয়ে কিভাবে কি করব করা উচিত করা হচ্ছে সে নিয়ে ডক্টর আয়সা আমার দেখা ওয়ান অফ দা ব্রাইটেস্ট কার্ডিওলজি স্টুডেন্ট আই হ্যাভ এভার সিন শি ইজ অলসো ভেরি হাম্বল দ্যাস ওয়ান অফ দা ভেরি রেয়ার কম কোয়ালিটিস দ্যাট উই ফাইন্ড অ্যামং স্টার্স আজকে আমরা দেখব যে একজন টিচার হিসাবে আমাদের এই ইয়াং এস্টেন্ট প্রফেসরটি কতটুকু ভালো আমরা এই দু তিন দিন দেখেছি ফিরোজকে দেখেছি প্রফেসর মনোয়ারকে দেখেছি আজকে আমরা আয়সাকে দেখব দিস পিপুল আর বিকামিং হোয়াট ওয়ান এ টিচার শুড বি দে আর ভেরি গুড কমিউনিকেটরস দে আর ভেরি সিনসিয়ার হার্ড ওয়ার্কিং অ্যানালাইজার কাজে তারা ফাঁকি দেয় না যে কাজটি করতে হয় পড়াশোনার কাজে সেটা তারা খুব মনোযোগ দিয়ে করে আশা করি আজকে যে প্রেজেন্টেশন হবে সেটা আমার এই কথার প্রমাণ ছাড়া অন্য কোনো দিকে যাবে না শাহিন সবাই অপেক্ষা করছে আমরা মনে হয় এখন আয়সার লেকচারের দিকে যাই থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ for the very kind recommendation and uh, introduction thank you sir i will be speaking on covid-19 and ischemic heart disease and this is really the bread and butter of what we do uh, at our institute because we have a lot of uh, coronary cases coming in at ibrahim cardiac hospital where i work so um, we know that ischemic heart disease encompasses a wide spectrum there is st segment elevation mi there is non st mi there is unstable angina and there is also chronic coronary syndromes and we know that within acute mi there is type 1 and type 2 mi type 1 is due to an acute plaque rupture or erosion and type 2 is because of a supply demand mismatch to the myocardium because of a supply demand mismatch in the blood vessels supplying the myocardium and there's also another entity called takotsubo cardiomyopathy so in times of covid the management of ischemic heart disease essentially depends on making decisions quickly and it depends on a few points or aspects that we need to consider one of them is whether it's acute or chronic the reason i showed this slide before is because if a patient comes with an acute coronary syndrome the management pathway would be different and if he or she came with a chronic coronary syndrome then it would be different it we when they do come with an acute coronary syndrome you have to consider the hemodynamic stability of the patient then of course whether the patient is covid positive or negative or a pui that is a person on the investigation a suspected covid case the management was also depend on the facilities available at the place where the patient presents for example it, if it presented at my institute where we have a cath lab ccu trained staff it would be different whereas if a patient presented to an upazila health complex the uh, management pathway would be different and of course it also depends on the availability of pp for staff because ccu and uh, cath lab staff should have available pp when handling patients uh, that are pui and uh, if we were to revascularize these patients acutely without knowing their covid status then there has to be an availability of negative pressure ventilation in the cath labs separate uh, clean and dirty labs and also the availability of terminal cleaning So I've given this background because I'll be sharing a few cases and I'm hoping that uh, the, the session is interactive. So please um, feel free to ask questions and engage in the polls that uh, we'll be having. So the first case is a 55-year-old male who presented with chest pain for three hours. He's normotensive, non-diabetic, and also he had a history of fever for one day. On initial examination, general examination, uh, his pulse rate was around 76 and it was irregularly regular and his blood pressure was 130 over 80 millimeter mercury. The pulse later became, became regularly irregular. On auscultation, there was no significant abnormality. Both heart sounds were audible. There were no murmurs and uh, lung auscultation showed bilateral basal crackles. And this patient's COVID status is not known. So this is the... Um, initial ecg would anyone like to unmute and tell me what they see here je kono ekjon unmute kore bolte paren cuz idea ta hocche interactive ami uttor bole dile to lag nai ami bole 
Yeah, participant there may request Kurbo. Please participate and respond. I am not saying that the Shobai Jeno, the Jeta Pul Hok should hook and Shaus Kure Bolly, about Bangla English, Jebabi J communicate Kotichai, Shibabi Jeno Kori. Amadu Disho, Shobai Mile Sheka, Sheta J language who that take it to Kunu problem me. A Shikati Matri, Bulkora Odikar Raki, Amra Sheta. অধিকারটা চর্চা করব অবশ্যই জি স্যার এটা একটা to v v6 mi আছে আর হচ্ছে 23 avfa reciprocal send আছে সাথে হচ্ছে অকেশনাল ইকটোপিক্স আছে এবং রেট হচ্ছে রেগুলারলি রেগুলার ইয়েস কমপ্লেক্স ওয়াইড ভেরি গুড সো এটা একটা অ্যান্টেরিয়র anterior anterior st segment elevation mi and it actually acta ventricular bigemini because pvc ta dekhen regularly hocche ei jonno initially irregularly hoyse ekhane to normal beat but tar pore dekhte sen regularly irregular so this is ventricular bigemini mane tar pvc ta prottek beat er pore ekta pvc hocche premature ventricular contraction so this is an anterior st segment elevation mi with uh, ventricular bigemini ekhon Key differential diagnosis hoyte pare mi hoyte pare ar gotokalke monwar sir er lecture e to aro kichu shiklen jehetu ekta covid patient fever ni asche onno kichu hoyte pare kina erokom ekta st elevation picture ni ashle gotokalke topics tai to chilo myocarditis so myocarditis hoyteo pare but unlikely because ekhane khub clear cut st segment elevation ase majhe majhe v1 to v3 te jodi shudhu thakto it could have been even brugada but যেহেতু ফুল ক্লিনিক্যাল পিকচারটা দেখে মিলাইতে হয় একটা পেশেন্ট আসবে চেস্ট পেইন অ্যাকিউট চেস্ট পেইন সো আমরা এসটি এলিভেশন এমআই ধরে আগাচ্ছি সো কি কি ইনভেস্টিগেশন পাঠাবেন এরকম একটা পেশেন্ট আসলে ইসিজির পরে কি করবেন যে কোনো একজন বলতে পারবেন Troponin core key uh, differentiate korajabe. It out the Gotakalke monor sautor bolidiatin. That with a certain cutoff, you can also do. I should the troponina usually act of MI Joto Ashti Amra Kitu act a panel or patient the COVID era. So RTPC are act a patai thobe. Ami bolichita are lung basic crepes assay. So act a chest x ray, then troponin and D dimers. And Amra regularly uh, act of. Depending on the center, Kajunam Bolotsi treatment always depends on the center. Opposilate Ashe at the Gula panel order Korata Koromane Holona, but if it is at a tertiary care center where the patient will eventually get admitted and report Asha Juno Shamai Thagwe, then we generally order this full panel, including CRP and ferritin because of COVID era. Ferritin to Akonar Korahoina, Age Jokun Amadar RTPC are at the routinely and easily Thaktona, Amra ferritin ordered Ditham just to get an idea of. Whether it is going towards COVID or not. And focus, that is a point of care ultrasound, or the bedside echo, depending on availability, depending on PP, and depending on because it is a close contact Ashar Motha test. So, unless absolutely necessary, Egula Amra, COVID irate actually or avoid Kori. So, this is the chest x ray. Chest x ray the key that Kajabe. Dr. Chat box is the other. It is a normal chest x ray, Naki abnormal. It take a patient to react to AP, money, PNA, bedside X-ray. So you can see that there are some peripheral infiltrates. There is a bit of evidence of pulmonary edema also, but it a pulmonary edema take, naki COVID, it actually differentiate character difficult. So I'm going to put in order currency. And the idea of troponin it our Udesha is that even without ischemia, COVID patients are troponin elevation. And in case of a marked elevation, that is when it's more than five times normal, it could be you should suspect either myocarditis or a type 1 MI. In type 1 MI, it is even higher. So what happens is a patient with the Amadar emergency, is that we would send a baseline panel and then transfer the patient according to the suspicions. So ideally, in a tertiary care hospital, you should have a red zone for absolutely positive and very strongly positive patients. Uh, an amber zone or yellow zone where majamaji who are not 
uh, ne negative, but who are very unlikely to be positive so that they are not exposed within hospital to the positive cases and a green zone that is absolutely clean. And you have to divide or triage them from the emergency room so that there is as minimal contact as possible. practically center so once the COVID, if COVID is strongly suspected and the patient presents with a cardiac emergency, either an ACS or an LVF, or if even the patient COVID is not suspected, if they present with an ACS, we usually put them in at the red zone CCU because of the strong suspicion and because they need to be attended to in a CCU. If it is not a cardiac emergency, generally we send them to the yellow zone if there is no suspicion of COVID. But if, if COVID is suspected and it is a cardiac emergency, we would still uh, put them in the red zone. And if the patient is COVID negative, then at Mashage COVID chilo, Gotakalke, Chesta Koreashik into Achke, Chespainiashit. Gotakalke is negative. So very unlikely that COVID hoise, that patient would be put in the green zone. And all patients in red zone and yellow zone on admission, Jekane uh, facilities available, they should have a COVID test because in hospital, OPD patient there Kora Dorkana, inpatient hospital, inpatient there Kora Uchit because there is always a chance of cross infection. And these patients might proceed to angiography, might proceed to echo, jekhane, healthcare worker exposure. So shop all admitted patients, some of the center COVID test kori. And once they are negative, as soon as they're negative, in fact, number green zone shift kori. And this is the practical working um, scenario that we follow. So now we know that that patient was an acute STEMI. What urgent treatments will you order? Kane are kiki hobe. Acute MI ashjev. Uh, saturation is around 88. Chat box, unmute hemodynamically stable or unstable, it's first day. Hemodynamically stable or unstable. That's her pore. A common patient of first jet house bed rest, then hooks a high flow oxygen. If let me stop you. Very good. Ik to stop Kori. I can a eta dekaki hemodynamically stable and unstable monohoche. A parameter stable. Very good. Okay. I can continue current. Yes. Then high flow oxygen bullets in. Continue current. Okay, anyways, so high flow oxygen, they've been always like IV access because these patients are hemodynamically stable. massive MI. Anytime unstable, you have to have an IV access for either atropine or adrenaline or any life saving medication. Then antiplatelets, loading. Ideally, I emergency because. As soon as the patient presents, you should, in an MI, minute is muscle. Whether COVID or not, minute is muscle. So you have to give the oral medications as early as possible, a loading dose of a statin. If there's ongoing chest pain, then uh, IV morphine and or an IV anti, with an IV antiemetic. A jyotamine bolitsit are failure asset. And arecta test order korauchit chilo, that is anti pro BNP, because he had basal crackles. Oh, extra picture there, exclude Karajuno, whether it is uh, due to failure or any other cause leading to that x-ray, he should have, we should have ordered an anti-pro BNP also. And it, uh, LVFA treatment, Karajuna, IV Lasix. Akon, immediate early management, Korlin, what is the definitive acute management? This is a poll. It's a poll touch, Aaron, poll touch to respond, Korlin. So will we activate the cat lab for primary PCI? Bearing in mind, this is COVID era, bearing in mind that we may not have a clean a dirty separate cat lab only to do COVID cases. Then, or will we thrombolize the patient? Will we give low molecular weight heparin? Will we treat conservatively with only the anti ischemic oral medications that we just gave, or will we do something else? Full share go to Parvo, but a kind of so much of the Apna is to share them off for it or for me share go to Parvo. Okay, Gigi, Corin, Ashwidanai. It's the Monetagbe, Karamon and Artak Lejigish Corin. Arami option will a thalic chat the other day. Amiki, unshare Corboita. 
আপনি এখন পর শেয়ার করেন অথবা কেউ এখানে লিখতেও পারেন ইফ ইফ ইটস ইজিয়ার দেন অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইউ ক্যান জাস্ট রাইট ইট বাট পোলটা দেখলে একটা জেনারেল ডেমোগ্রাফিক বোঝা যেত যে কোনো একজন অপশন চ্যাটেও দিতে পারেন দ্যাটস ফাইন দে আর গেটিং টু রেসপন্স অলসো ইন দ্য চ্যাট ইয়া সো দিস আর দি অপশনস ইয়া ইয়া ঠিক but it i actually practically amra jeta kori covid era the we thrombolyze the patient and thrombolysis can be done by streptokinase or tenecteplase amra preferentially tenecteplase use kori because it's faster it's a bolus although it is more expensive and it comes with lesser complications like uh, antigenic issues and can be given again etc and in fact the first early data from china they recommended that emergency iv thrombolysis is the first choice in acute stemi this was at the beginning of the pandemic but as we have progressed and we learned and this is the bangladesh guidelines that uh, i was part of the writing group of and even here considering our resource limitations considering that the vast majority of the country does not have cath labs and considering that thrombolysis can even be done in a, a district hospital or a peripheral hospital the recommendation that we follow is to thrombolyze the patient because it can be done quickly also because any revascularization strategy has to follow a time limit if getting a cath lab ready is going to take greater than 90 minutes from the presentation or to shift the patient is going to take greater than 120 minutes then we are losing time in revascularizing and it's always better in that case to thrombolyze and then go for a later revascularization strategy which is called pharmacoinvasive within 3 to 24 hours and another reason why uh, the guidelines afterwards from the united states and europe preferred uh, a cath lab primary pci as opposed to thrombolysis manonara primary pci recommend correctly uh, mainly in the us and uh, europe was because there's early data also that or many of these cases that people considered were stemi had no obstructive coronary arteries so in a non obstructive coronary there is no point in thrombolyzing because the idea is to thrombolyze the obstructive and there were many many such cases that were masquerading as myocarditis with the uh, st elevations which you couldn't tell apart at the beginning uh, unless you had uh, actual visualization so this was another reason why uh, in the western world they shifted towards a primary pci predominant strategy so this is uh, a us that is a society for cardiovascular angiography and intervention we call sky guideline and according to them if a patient presented with st elevation and covid-19 is positive or probable they did a pocus to confirm that there were wall motion because if there are wall motion abnormalities then it is an mi a junno ekta urgent ekor useful arna sar utility ta oi chai that jodi there are certain walls that are not moving that are consistent with anterior wall motion abnormality takle eta anterior stemi erokom confirm korar jabe ei jonno ekta focus korar uddeshyo but etao it has to be done with pp and it depends varies from center to center so if you can confirm that then they have asked to proceed to primary pci but this has to be in cath labs where there is negative pressure ventilation especially because covid is not just droplet it is also airborne and there has to be facilities for terminal cleaning which in resource limited settings is very difficult to um, offer and if covid-19 is possible again if the symptoms are consistent and the same pathway uh, to go for a primary pci but if they have also said that if the echo cannot detect a clear wall motion or if there is a chance of myocarditis then they don't activate the cath lab but they instead take the patient for a ct angio which is also a viable alternative uh, in places that have a ct uh, machine available so if the patient presents then to a hospital that does not have a cath lab that is a non primary pci center here it depends on the time taken to transfer which is typical even of a normal stemi ordinary times jodi 120 meter beshi transfer time lage 
then recommendation hocche thrombolyze kora with either streptokinase or tenecteplase which is the same uh, recommendation that has been followed if the patient presents to a non primary pci center and this is the european guidelines even here there is a in the vast majority of cases if you can transport the patient within 24 hours then they have maintained that primary pci is uh, is the gold standard even during covid times but these are all countries that have a lot more resources than lower middle income settings which is why the world heart federation has specifically put out um, a paper on the management of cardiovascular diseases in limited resource settings and here they have recommended that in stemi that is low risk to consider thrombolysis in stemi that is high risk adjunct kintu bolche because saturation com that you should do a primary pci so this is something like that if there is high risk stemi you should consider primary pci because that would that is a definitive and gold standard management for stemi and this then would depend if pp is available that is also part of the uh, criteria and the hospital cath lab personnel are available and it can be done quickly and in cases these are in cases of confirmed covid in suspected covid thrombolysis should be the reperfusion strategy of choice like in patients with confirmed covid and we will then come to non stmi where in limited resource settings the world heart federation paper recommends a conservative management until con confirmatory results are available and we will come to non stmi a little more later then so this is the ecg of the patient after thrombolysis as you can see now there's a bit of af also and now the next poll now you have information you have thrombolyzed the patient and the rt pcr has come back it is negative so now this patient has a, is covid negative the we have done an echo which shows an ejection fraction of 45% with wall motions that are consistent with an anterior mi so it is not myocarditis that is confirmed what will you do now will you continue the patient with low molecular weight heparin that is enoxaparin and treat conservatively because there is no need for angiography you have thrombolyzed will you do an angiography as soon as possible that is pharmaco invasive will you do an angiography during the course of the admission but later maybe you'll see take your own cool time before the patient gets discharged or will you do it at a later date so which what is the option i will stop sharing so that the poll is visible but uh, anybody can put the answer in the chat as well answer is option b good ke bolche option b option b uh, yes. dr sara yes that's uh, answer why uh, pharma already patient jehetu covid positive na eta ekta ebong thrombolysis se peye geche but jehetu extensive entry mi ebong patient treatment power poreo already tar f rate ebong ejection fraction 45% yes. uh, that is lower than 50% so amader uh, main treatment jeta mane angiography kore pharmaco invasive jeta ar ki mane jehetu thrombolysis hoyeche then angiography kore amra je report ta ashbe according to block onujay stenting or in case of cbg jodi lage shekhetre oi treatment e jete hobe very good ar ei tai amra actually kori jehetu patient negative so kono bad nai to that to do it and this is the angiographic picture ekhon uh, angiogram bujano ei dan dik ekta c shape that is the right coronary artery eta te kono block nai আর বাম পাশে দুইটা হচ্ছে লেফট কনরিয়াট লেফট মেইন কনরিয়াট যে দুই ভাগ হয়ে যায় দুইটা ভিউ আর এইটা যেটা দেখতেছেন এখানে একটু প্যাচ লাইক আ লিটল প্যাচ অফ কন্ট্রাস্ট আইডিয়ালি ইট শুড কাম ডাউন লাইক দিস देयर শুড বি আ ম্যাসিভ ভেসেল সো ইট ইজ অক্লুডেড অলমোস্ট फ्रॉम इट्स প্রক্সিমাল পার্ট এন্ড इट्स 100% অক্লুডেড সো ইন দিস সিনারিও হোয়াট শুড বি ডু নেক্সট তুমি বলো je bolechen in that case uh, uh, cbg is most preferred can you see cbg korbe led almost more than 700% already excluded yes uh, occluded hoye ase okay so so ekhetre stenting kora ta to tough uh ekhetre right. cbg ta most probably patient er jonno bhalo acha ei tai actually bol darona mane je eta amader actually practically patient party the sathe o confusing hoy because you should open it as early as possible and arekta hocche 100% occlude holyo usually erokom jodi 100% occlude hoy cbg te kon gula pathay je gula actually ekta right side theke kichu natural bypass jeta amra retrograde boli oi ta jodi thake then we can consider cbg eta uh, if you absolutely need to 
but most of the time the difference between sending a patient for cabg and acutely opening a stenting is based on how quickly the patient presents eta to tomake bole apnake bole deya hoyse that it is stemi stemi mane tar vessel bondhoi hoyse probably ek din ager beshi na so je gula acutely bondho hoyeche e gula khurar shombhabona onek beshi je gula onek din dhore bondho ei gula kintu stemi hisabe present korbe na ei gula ashbei chronic stable angina hisabe so those patients you can wait you can delay you can do cabg but in this patient 100% bondho mane tar tenecti place thrombolysis tao besh bhalo kaaj kore nai maybe ei patch er upore bondho chilo ar ektu kani khule dise but ei patient er kintu revascularization ta complete hoy nai so as early as possible angiogram korar uddeshyo hoy hocche as urgently as possible revascularize kora so this patient should have a pharmaco invasive strategy or a pci jeta attempt korte hobe ami bujhate parchi keno cabg na apni bujhchen yes okay so that is why because cabg will take at least 5 to 7 days ekhane dual antiplatelet dewa hoyeche so ei dual antiplatelet obosthaye kintu unless absolutely urgent सीएबीजी uh, करते गो ब्लिडिंग समस्या हो जाए सो एंड स्पेशलि वैन यू हाव एक्सेस दिस इज द आईडियल केस एक्चुअलि फर प्राइमरि पी सी आई एंड दैट इज व्हाट वाज डन दिस इज अ वायर अ वायर वाज पास थ्रू एंड यू कैन सी देन दैट इज मोर कंट्रास्ट बीइंग पास दैट मींस द वेसल इज ओपनिंग अप एंड दिस इज अ स्टेंट बीइंग इनफ्लेटेड इन द प्रोक्सिमल पार्ट ऑफ द एलईडी एंड दिस इज द रिवेस्क्यूराइज वेसल so this was a very good and timely result for the patient and it was lucky that uh, he was covid negative so this is why as soon after admission we do the covid status so that we can accelerate the pharmaco invasive process as early as possible and this is a reasonable strategy in resource limited environments where we can't uh, do primary pci quickly so it's not over after that the patient was transferred to the ccu then you have to monitor the puncture site vitals because just because he has been reascularized it doesn't mean the patient cannot deteriorate je kono ek shomoy ekta my patient kharap hoye jete pare urine output monitor korte hobe joto contrast dewa hoyeche ensure dual antiplatelet treatment because ekta stent dewar pore ekta jinish hocche in stemi with pci for one year the patient should be on dual antiplatelet treatment that is aspirin and in this case we will give clopidogrel because the patient was thrombolyzed so after 48 hours we can give any other antiplatelet p2y12 blocker jeta bole but acutely jeo to thrombolyze hoyeche amra clopidogrel dise we have to continue the statin give any other anti ischemics beta blockers ac inhibitors arbs as necessary we should continue diuretics because the patient had failure and an ef of 45 and we discharge the patient as early as possible because it is covid if he or she is stable and you have to give a clear follow up plan and tell the patient instructions to return to hospital because onek patient to actually covid dekhe they delay presentations data all over the world shudho amader deshe na amader deshe hoyto kom hoy eta but in other parts of the world they delay presentation to the hospital because of the fear of contracting covid so when you have the opportunity and the patient has already presented to you when you discharge you have to give them clear instructions to come back to the hospital if chest pain recurs and i will show you why in another case later on during the presentation so i hope stemi with suspected covid but eventually covid negative and management strategy ta ideally kemne hoy eta amri bujhayte parsi ar eta jodi ekta peripheral hospital e present kore then patient ta thrombolyze kore ekta tertiary care hospital e ashle ei process ta hoye jabe ei jonnoi actually transfer korar dorkar ta beshi and early thrombolysis korar so this is another case 66 year old male presenting with chest pain for 6 hours this patient has a history of fever for 3 days and known sars cov 2 positive he is visibly dyspneic on admission and febrile with a uh, tachycardia blood pressure is 150 over 90 precordial auscultation has no abnormalities but lung auscultation has bilateral crackles up to the mid zone with vascular breath sound acg ta ke bolbe very easy and very similar also and kichuta similar ecg ke bolte parbe anyone 
good ekjon bolche antihistamine there's antihistamine and here also very similar to the previous one there are pvcs coincidentally very similar patient ash so we know this is an anterior stemi so then again like before we did basic investigations additionally an anti pro bnp which was elevated troponin was elevated d dimers were elevated the patient had neutrophilic leukocytosis crp was elevated and because this was a suspected covid positive and we were not going to take the patient for a, a cag but there was reasonable uh, beyond reasonable doubt that it was mi because troponin more than 50 is unlikely to be myocarditis and this is the x-ray with the uh, pulmonary edema as well as perhaps super added covid infection also where will you admit this patient in the red zone in the yellow zone or the green zone green zone to prashno yashbena but it's a clear cut you would admit from the uh, um emergency into the red zone as an aconarecta pole what is the definitive acute management actually pole na the just chatelic clear hoy so will you activate the cath lab for primary pci in this patient will you thrombolyze will you give enoxaparin will you not give even enoxaparin you will just treat conservatively or will you do something else good one ki b ashya so line ashya that is good it's similar to the previous one but not similar so this is ideally you should thrombolyze also this patient that is different from the previous case is that he has a uh, covid so you should because the saturation is low because uh the lungs are compromised he should be given iv dexamethasone and he's requiring iv oxygen iv remdesivir iv antibiotics to treat the super added infection because there was neutrophilic leukocytosis iv diuretics to treat the failure and uh additionally after thrombolysis after taking place we continue subcutaneous low molecular heparin in addition to aspirin clopidogrel statins etc so this patient we then managed conservatively Uh, in the red zone until there was symptomatic improvement that is until he didn't require oxygen support the lvf resolved and there was no chest pain and then we discharged him so this might be arguable in resource in high income countries it might be a different strategy but in low income countries realistically speaking this is what we do so the patient was then discharged after symptomatic improvement with regular anti ischemic medication plus we gave rivaroxaban 20 mg daily because covid is a procoagulant state there is they are prone to coagulopathy and on top of that even uh, an mi is a uh, is a coagulopathic nightmare there is pro as well as anti coagulopathies and so we discharged them on rivaroxaban as a prophylaxis for uh, dvt uh, so so venous thromboembolism and then we asked the patient to follow up with a negative sars cov 2 test and to return for coronary angiography and revascularization now the idea of doing it is in the first case there was only one vessel that was blocked but there can be by what we call bystander disease there can be multi vessel disease so even if it's late you need to do an angiography to know whether the patient has only the lad blocked or whether there is any other vessel blocked and whether the patient needs to go for cabg because ekta vessel er jonno very unlikely cabg te patana hoy unless it is a left main or unless it is something that you cannot absolutely stent but when there is multi vessel sometimes in diabetics it's better and that's a different uh, discussion altogether but we need to know the anatomy and the only way to do that is by an angiography so now another case this was a 57 year old woman who presented with chest pain for 8 hours she is normotensive but diabetic and dyslipidemic no fever no but she gives a history of dry cough so her pulse is 56 bp is 130 80 heart lungs nothing abnormal and covid status is unknown but this is a pui because she has a history of dry cough what is the ecg diagnosis here anyone can write it in the chat it's an interesting ecg look at b1 to v6 Techno action bolen, good. Biphasic graphia bolse biphasic T in chest leads. Yeah, V1 to V6, and a biphasic T tuck ke ki bolle. What is this? It's called a sign. It has an eponymous sign name for it. This biphasic Wallen, T. Uh, Wallen sign. Yes, it's Wallen's. And what does Wallen's indicate? Um, it's maybe 
এলইডি হচ্ছে প্রক্সিমালি এলইডি ওয়াজ এলইডি ইয়েস ভেরি গুড সো দ্যাট that is why this is then a high risk entity because even if the troponin is not elevated when there is a well and sign and a patient presents with unstable angina non stmi ideally you should activate the cat lab but this lady has a cough so we sent the routine panel as well and this is the x ray which is also not too bad does not particularly indicative so the diagnosis here is non stmi because the troponin is 8.6 So what will you do next for this patient? So this is not a STEMI. So we, A should not be the case because this primary PCI is only for STEMI. So what will you do in this case? Will you thrombolyze? Will you give low molecular weight heparin? Will you treat conservatively? Will you do nothing? You can put that in the chat. good c so low molecular weight heparin that's that's the answer because this is non st and also you have to do serial ecgs whenever there is a discrepancy in an ecg you have to see whether because ectodon bolus it it could be proximal led proximal led evolve hoyte hoyte ta ekta stemi hoye jete pare so you should always do serial ecgs to see for any dynamic ecg changes because if the ecg changes are dynamic it means the patient is high risk So there is definitely dynamic ECG changes in this patient. The uh, biphasicness has become even more biphasic. This is after two hours. Then in the next ECG, the biphasic T waves became inverted T waves. So ideally, in, if there was no suspicion of COVID, this is the kind of patient we would have taken to the cath lab almost immediately, even if it is not STEMI, even if it is not for primary PCI. But when you look at the non stmi path when this is the european guideline and we know the esc guidelines has a um, very high risk high risk intermediate and low risk in this case this is a high risk patient because there are dynamic stt sorry dynamic stt changes in this uh, ecg and in such scenarios you should test for sars cov 2 if positive transfer to covid equipped hospital and uh, in such setup to do an early invasive test ideally within 24 hours but once again we have limitations so that might be a little difficult but we'll see what happens so this patient had was positive for sars cov 2 so we didn't take them to the cath lab because that was risking exposure to a number of other patients so we shifted the patient to the red zone ccu and managed with the optimum dapt anti ischemic low molecular weight heparin and specific treatment for covid and discharged her after the completion of the low molecular weight treatment and brought back after uh, sars cov 2 was negative for angiography and that was a proximal led occlusion which was stented then another patient is a 68 year old male who presented with chest pain for 6 hours this patient is normotensive non diabetic dyslipidemic here the patient had covid 4 weeks back now follow this very carefully and he tested negative one week previously and retested again one day before presentation and he has no fever no cough breathlessness so it's very unlikely that this patient has covid because he te- just tested negative the day before and interestingly two months before that is before he got covid he had an anterior mi which was thrombolyzed and rescue pci to led was done even at that time because this was covid era we thrombolyzed him even though he was later negative for covid because uh, that was the protocol that was followed so this patient has a stent in the left anterior descending after an mi and then he had covid 4 weeks back and now he has tested negative but came with acute chest pain and hemodynamically stable on admission so this is the admission ecg what do you see here what is the ecg it's not difficult it's that easy ecg i mean it's just a kind of similar ecg niyeche so that like a pattern end of the session e dorte parben onno lead kulate na gye good this is stemi anterior yes so this is an anterior stemi so kintu patient e to already stemi hoye geche so abar st utse kemne anybody can say he has already had a stemi and he has already had a stent so what could have happened in this case নিউলি এলইডি তে আবার হচ্ছে ব্লক হতে পারে মানে আগে যদি প্রক্সিমাল বা ডিসকালি এরকম কোন একটা কিছু তাহলে লেশনটা যদি লং এলইডি হয় 
আচ্ছা এটা হইতে পারে নিউ নিউ এলইডি লিজন হইতে পারে আর স্টেনথ্রোম্বোসিস স্টেনথ্রোম্বোসিস তো হচ্ছে দুই মাস আগে এটা মানে লেট স্টেনথ্রোম্বোসিস এরকম ক্ষেত্রে যদি হয় না এটা হইতে পারে মানে যদি পেশেন্টের ইরেগুলার সাবএকিউট সাবএকিউট মানে যে দুই پیشنট হচ্ছে হিস্ট্রি হচ্ছে হয় সেই ক্ষেত্রে একটা স্টেনথ্রোম্বোসিস হতে পারে যদি پیشنট গুড ইট মে বি টেস্ট অফ এলভি অ্যানিউরিজম Yes, that is possible also. LV aneurysm is possible. LV aneurysm is possible to be last, the previous ECG is possible to compare. If you have a ST, it's unlikely to be aneurysm because persistent ST elevation is consistent with LV aneurysm. But that is a good differential depending on the ECG, correct? So this patient, it's very likely a new STEMI. So this patient has come with acute chest pain. and he is negative for sars cov 2 but the troponin is elevated so this is clearly a new mi not an aneurysm now when you know this details what urgent treatments will you order now what will you do will you treat it like an mi so what will you do this patient is sars negative sars cov negative what is the definitive management will you treat conservatively will you thrombolyze will you give enoxaparin will you proceed for angiography will you do something else d do any other options good so dui jon d bol chhe ek jon c bol chhe yes initially enoxaparin d ben yes that is also correct and you should ideally proceed for angiography for the plain and simple reason that the patient already has a stent there jodi a stent ta na takto ami probably thrombolyze kore felta but and jodi if i had absolutely no access to a primary pci then i should thrombolyze it but this is a, a hospital that has access and troponin is negative so we did an angiography and this is what it looks like so if you remember the previous picture of the patient who had a stent এখানে দেখতেছেন পুরো একটা খালি and there is like a net that is the stent so it is blocked within the stent এটাই যেটা আমরা ডিসকাস করতেছিলাম is called stent thrombosis and stent thrombosis actually covid era তে বেশি হচ্ছে কয় কিছু ডেটা আছে because covid is a procoagular pathy is a procoagulant stage and if there can be venous thromboembolism there are mechanisms for arterial thromboembolism also and this has been documented in the literature and patients in fact are coming with what is called acute or subacute or late stent thrombosis so this is a case of stent thrombosis that is why the stent itself has got blocked and the patient had covid so this happened after the covid and it's a coagulopathy it has been documented even uh, in multi multiple vessels in this case report this was an inferior stemi where the rca was blocked and there was a thrombus in other vessels also you can see this whitish thing and uh, there is also a very elegant study coming from london where they showed that uh, patients who presented with stemi and covid had higher rates of multi vessel thrombosis as in the case report that i just showed you higher uh, higher rates of stent thrombosis and higher modified thrombus grade that is all those lesions were more thrombotic than those that were not and this is a blog i wrote about covid stemies whether they have a higher thrombus burden or not that's available on the world heart federation website so that's another thing we have to bear in mind when patients who have been stented come back with chest pain to uh, be aware that especially if they've had covid it might be uh, a stent thrombosis which needs to be intervened so that patient was uh, we then did what's called a poba that is a plain old balloon angioplasty and that yielded a good uh, result this is another case a 73 year old woman who presented with dyspnea and fever for 6 days she's hypertensive diabetic dyslipidemic so on examination she was febrile slightly dyspneic uh, but her pulse was okay blood pressure was okay lungs had few bibasal crackles and this is obviously covid it's a clear cut covid she had covid she was commenced on treatment for covid also and on day 2 she developed chest pain on minimal exertion that is ccs class sorry i this is a mistake on minimal exertion yeah that's correct the ccs class 4 yes and this is a ecg anybody see anything strange in the ecg you can write it on the chat 
যেকোনো একজন এখানেও চেস্ট লিডের দিকে দেখবেন তখন একটা ক্লু দিলাম মানে আমি ইচ্ছা করে ভি ওয়ান টু ভি সিক্স এর মধ্যে রাখছি সো দ্যাট ইটস নট ডিফিকাল্ট টু ফলো আ প্যাটার্ন আই ডেন্ট ইভেন গো টুয়ার্ডস দ্য ইনফিরিয়র লিডস ইন দ্য কেসেস ডি ইউ এফ ইনভারশন আছে ভি ফাইভ টু ভি সিক্স বাট এক টপিকও হচ্ছে আছে ডিটেরিটিংটিভেন্স So then two hours later we did an ECG and you can see that now there are even more prominent T inversions in V3 to V6. They are also in one and AVL. So the lateral is also involved. So what do you think this is? Is it a non-STMI? Is it a myocarditis? What can it be? Based on today's and yesterday's knowledge that has been uh, given to you. This patient is COVID positive. What can it be? What is your suspicion? Just do it to option Jodhi Dei. Myocarditis or MI? Check on actor link then. Chat box. Eh? It is a STEMI now because ST elevation now. So how will it be non-STMI or it will be myocarditis? Hobe. Anyone? Actually, it could be anything. It is a non-STMI. Why do I rule out? What do I do? 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 ইকো করলে হচ্ছে মানে ফার্স্ট এটা হচ্ছে যদি হার্ট সাউন্ড অস্কালটেড করে মাইকার্ডিয়াসিস চিন্তা করলে আমার পেরিকার্ডিয়াল রাব একটা হচ্ছে পেতে পারি এটা হচ্ছে ক্লিনিক্যাল এক্সামিনেশন ইসিসি তে হচ্ছে মাইকার্ডিয়াসিস চিন্তা করলে আমার হচ্ছে মানে ইসিসি চেঞ্জটা মাইকার্ডিয়াসিস এর সাথে তো হচ্ছে কনকেভিটি আপ কনভেক্সিটি থাকবে যদি ওইভাবে চিন্তা করি এটা তো অ্যাকচুয়ালি একদম ক্লিয়ার না মানে মাইকার্ডিয়াসিস এ কনভেক্সিটি আপওয়ার্ড থাকবে বলে কিছু নাই ইনফ্যাক্ট যেহেতু গ্লোবাল ইনভলভমেন্ট মাইকার্ডিয়াসিস এর দিকে বেশি rather than non st but uh ekhane troponin korte pare troponin jodi huge elevated hoy then it could be non st mi more than 5 times more than 20 times uh, 10 times ar eta jodi ekta echo jodi keu pp pore echo kore jehetu patient hemodynamically stable unstable na unstable hoyle probably ekta focus kora dorkar and if actually ideally ekta echo korle clearly bujha jabe jodi regional wall motion hoy it is very likely to be an mi if not no if if it is global it's unlikely to be a, a non st mi and troponin will be will give a clue so what we did for this patient we did a an ecg 6 hours later rod poche so this is quite alarming this is looking increasingly like a non st mi but uh, agent no covid can present in many ways and this is a real case amar nijer ek friend er ma আমাদের হসপিটালে ভর্তি ছিল সো ট্রোপোনিন রিপিটেডলি করা হয়েছে নেগেটিভ সো দেন উই থট ইট ইজ আনস্টেবল এন্ড জয়না এন্ড উই ম্যানেজড হার উইথ লো মলিকুলার ওয়েট হেপারিন এন্ড ডুয়াল অ্যান্টিপ্লেটলেটস ডিউরিং দ্য পিরিয়ড দ্যাট শি হ্যাড কোভিড আফটার শি রিকভারড ফ্রম কোভিড এন্ড দেন এন ইকো ওয়াজ অলসো ডান হুইচ আফটার শি রিকভারড ফ্রম কোভিড উই গট হার ব্যাক ইকো ওয়াজ ডান এন্ড ইসিজি চেঞ্জেস হ্যাড অলসো রিজলভড বাই দ্য টাইম শি কেম ব্যাক পোস্ট কোভিড but still because those changes were alarming because she was symptomatic and because she was diabetic 70 years hypertensive with risk factors and she had a prior history of an exertional chest pain we did an angiography which didn't show anything significant so this was a case of covid related myocarditis and it was a real clinical dilemma even while we were treating it because these ecg changes are not really consistent with anything particular so e gula hocche clinical dilemma that can arise in uh, covid patients and that are difficult to rule out jeta ordinarily could be easy hoye jeto amra just sathe sathe ekta echo kortam angiogram kortam bujhe bujha jeto whether it's an acute uh, occlusion or whether it's uh, an acute uh, mi or not but you have to 
do things a little conservatively given the resource limitation and also the because of the possibility of transmitting an active infection. So this is, I think, probably the last case. This was a 68-year-old male who presented to the OPD. OPD with exertional chest discomfort, CCS class 2 angina. So he is diabetic but normotensive and dyslipidemic, hemodynamically stable, no abnormalities on uh, examination. And this is the baseline ECG. Anybody can tell me if there's anything on it? Kichuna taka kichuna bulbe, if there is nothing remarkable. If there's anything there. Lateral is the depression in V5, V6, lead one, AVL. Yes, yes, that's there. So there's some mild ST depressions uh, in the lateral leads. So what will you then order next for this patient? This patient has come to the OPD. He is not admitted. He has what we will call a chronic coronary syndrome that is stable angina. So Kiki tests order Corbe, a patient. Are COVID issues unlikely because of symptoms are not nai. So what will you do? Chronic coronary syndrome, rule out court, eight type to ischemic spectrum at all. It's acute gula to shesh korashi, which you have to do urgently. Akon eta chronic patient nij symptoms six to seven weeks. So urgently dum dum kore admit kora moto kichu mone hoche na ki outpatient hisha be investigate kora jabe mone hoche. What do you think? OPD eco ETT hoche advice kore rule out for Yes. Are Jodi Pane patient has a bar history near the key Jodi Kono recent crescendo and Janot Hoytepare, then you might want to do a troponin and rule it out also, but not necessarily. This is a chronic coronary syndrome. So we did an ECG, we did an echo which showed no wall motion. So we then did an exercise stress test, which was positive. And we did say the patient is diabetic. So ideally, when, a, when you get an opportunity and a patient comes to hospital without making them come repeatedly, we should do a full uh, assessment of the patient. So do lipids to see the dyslipidemia status, do an HbA1c or a fasting blood sugar for the diabetic status and the complete blood count if plus minus. So how will you treat this patient? Good, somebody has written echo ETT, I can see the chat. So I couldn't bold when ABCD, sorry, that's a T, anti-schemic hobe, eta. Uh, would you give anti-schemic treatments on an outpatient basis and send them home? Will you admit immediately? B, will you proceed for an urgent angiography? Or will you do a CT coronary angiogram in this patient? Or will you do an angiogram later? I think somebody's phone is on. It take to mute. Got to call it. Thank you. So chat you can see. Anyone a else? Of a. Okay, good. A. Yes. So it's it, actually chronic coronary syndrome. That is ETT positive. Kintu erukum na huge. I mean seven meds bolsi. I mean bolina je three four meds. Could be early positive hoyse. Could be deep ST depression hoyse. Alarmingly because erukum hoy ETT hoye majhe majhe patient. But this patient is stable. So we can give him anti ischemic treatments on an OPD basis. And then it can actually correct answer exactly a option. You will ideally, I would give him anti ischemic treatments and advice and angiography at some point. Or if they don't want to do that, even a CT coronary is, is acceptable. Usually, CT coronary corbe. But Amadar, probably because that's not as well developed, perhaps we uh, generally proceed to investigate by angiography. So at some point, he will probably need one to check, but you can give anti ischemic treatments on an OPD basis right now and observe for symptomatic improvement. So uh, this then is how urgently you will refer patients for coronary interventions during the pandemic. And this is from uh, the European EAPCI guidelines. And as you can see, it's, it's a good summary basically because uh, in ischemic heart disease you will not postpone a STEMI a high risk non-STEMI or if the patient is in cardiogenic shock I didn't show an example of cardiogenic shock but that is obviously 
self-explanatory. It's an example of high risk. So in these cases, ideally, you should do the intervention as soon as possible. That is why the first case, somebody said CABG, CABG would delay. So that is an emergent case where you would do an intervention. By intervention here, I mean percutaneous, that is PCI or stenting. Then urgently to be done within days is intermediate risk non-STMI, unstable angina, left main, last remaining vessel, if the patient has angina, CCS class four, or if uh, in other cases, CABG in patients with non-STACS unsuitable for PCI, ATO embolitis. So if that patient had multivessel disease, or if you couldn't stent it, then you should do a CABG. Low priority, which you can do within less than three months, is advanced coronary artery disease with angina class three or NYHA class three symptoms, that is dyspnea scale. And you will, if the patient came with a STEMI and bystander disease, you would do stage PCI of the non-infarct related artery. And proximal LED also, you should not delay more than three months. And elective is CTO and as you can see, CCS with angina class two. So our patient had angina class two, so there is no urgent necessity to do uh, an intervention. You can give them anti-ischemic medications, treat conservatively and uh, take it from there. So uh, what do we do with elective cases? Can somebody please mute their microphone? I think there's some noise. Thank you. So what do we do with elective cases in our experience? This is not the only experience, but this is an experience of ours that has worked well at our center. For elective cases, we generally ask the patient to give the swab for RT-PCR prior to admission so that there is no need for them to even get admitted in an amber zone. When they're negative, they're admitted in the green zone for an angiography or the elective case, either the following day or even on the same day. And if the procedure is uneventful, if there is no need for an intervention, then they are discharged the same day in order to minimize hospital stay. But if a procedure happens, then depending on how complex it was, either the next day or the following day. And this is our outpatient echo setup. You can see here there is a polythene and a small pocket where the, patient, where the operator's hand will go through so that there is minimal contact. This is the patient which I have guarded. This is where the operator will sit. So there's very minimal contact between the patient and uh, the person performing it. And that is also a way to prevent uh, transmission. But of course, this polythene has to be cleaned and disinfected regularly. And also, I'd just like to bring attention to the fact that uh, globally, there has been a reduction in acute MI presentations during the peaks of the pandemic. That is, could be multifactorial. People have postulated that it might be because pa patients are afraid of presenting to hospital for fear of contracting COVID. They delay presentations and don't present accurately, which is why once a patient presents and they're being discharged, make sure you give them the advice that if they do have chest pain, they should be presenting uh, to a hospital. And that is an important message to give. So uh, in conclusion, I think the important thing is to triage properly, to triage according to the COVID status, whether they are positive, negative, or PUI under investigation then to triage according to the presentation, STEMI, non-STEMI, unstable angina, CCS, chronic coronary syndrome, to triage according to hemodynamic stability as early as possible, as soon as the patient presents to you. It's critical to differentiate the patients with type one MI, which I said was due to a plaque erosion or a plaque rupture. That's where something is actively going on within the patient's blood vessel, because these are the patients that you have to intervene as soon as possible. So it, you have to differentiate these type 1 MIs from the other patients who might present with hypertroponinemia, raised troponin changes, STT changes, myocarditis, who don't have a coronary etiology, basically. Then you also have to identify the STEMIs and the very high-risk non-STMIs for appropriate revascularization, because once we know that they're negative, ideally they should be offered treatment as in a non-COVID era, because we know they're negative. It's also important to be aware of masqueraders like myocarditis. The last case I showed you, the lady who had COVID and had a chest pain during the hospitalization, that was clearly myocarditis. And it's important to be aware of such presentations. And uh, the majority of non-STMI patients, however, usually don't have an ongoing ischemia unless they're very high risk or unless it was something like the Wellens. And you can generally allow medical treatment uh, and allow time to test the patients for the COVID-19 uh, infection. And it's also, as I reiterated, important once you revascularize to make sure that you treat the whole patient, give clear follow-up plans to ensure that patients return to hospital if any ischemic symptoms occur, what to do if they develop chest pain again, 
and to make sure that a follow up plan is given clearly for them to see you again and uh, contact you in the case of any necessity. And with that, if there are any questions, I'd like to take questions and uh, thank you for your attention. This, this is our hospital in Chabag. Thank you also uh, to Eminence and the World Heart Federation for the opportunity to speak today. I'm happy to take questions. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Ji. Dr. Sara. प्रब्लेम कर Good question. Actually, माने शॉप किचु एक तर give and take balance इर मुद्दे काज करते हैं. Revascularization के क्षेत्र में हमरा ideal जिनिस तथा actually करते पाच चीना. So if a patient comes with COVID, our dexamethasone तो प्रत्येक COVID ही तो दाव होती है ना. माने एक तर mild COVID with STEMI और दर क्षेत्र तो दाव इंडिकेटेड ना. You have to also pick exactly which patient dexamethasone is indicated in. ज़्यादा hypoxia, ज़्यादा oxygen लागे. ज़्यादा वेंटिलेशन लागे ओदर के अंतर्गत डेक्सामेथासोन इज़ इंडिकेटेड नॉट एवरी सिंगल कोविड पेशेंट सो ज़्यादा इंडिकेटेड अ पर्सन अ पेशेंट हु हैज इनफिल्ट्रेट्स ऑन द एक्सट्रे हु विल डेफिनेटली बेनिफिट फ्रॉम डेक्सामेथासोन बिकॉज़ एमआईओ किल करते पारे कोविड इज़ आल्सो अ किलर द्वितीय के तो शामलाई एक्चुअली माने एक बैलेंस अचीव करे यू हैव टू ट्रीट सो इन दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ पेशेंट्स वी गिव डेक्सामेथासोन बट वी आल्सो गिव द कंकॉमिटेंट कोविड ट्रीटमेंट बिकॉज़ If a patient needs ventilation and oxygen and infiltrates, then you certainly should give dexamethasone because it's a checks and balances scenario. Ki bujai the perche? Somebody has asked: Should we avoid cautiously use nitrate due to possibility of hypertension in a COVID positive? Uh, so COVID doesn't necessarily always cause hypertension. so it would always depend on the patient's blood pressure even without covid if a patient has hypertension then we avoid sometimes in inferior stemies with hypertension we anyway avoid so that is also something that should be done on a case by case basis if you feel like the patient is in shock then obviously you will not give it but it's not specific to covid that all covid patients will develop hypertension so not necessarily so you can uh, give it if the bl blood pressure is stable and especially if the patient has ongoing ischemic chest pain where they will benefit from it if the patient has acute left ventricular failure of course with a high pressure then you would give it yes pathological queue is in old mi but sometimes like when you practically see thousands and thousands of patients all of them don't only present with uh, especially if the queue is small and the st segment elevation is that much higher and one case that i showed was actually that patient had a pathological queue because that patient had an mi and he had a stent and then came again with a new mi so that pathological queue will remain there so it's a new stemi on top of that that was the reason why there was a pathological queue in that case it was a very clear cut pathological queue because it was an mi that was stented and presented again with a stent thrombosis which is essentially a type 4 mi any stent related mi is called type 4 mi according to the uh, fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction so that's the reason why the patient had a pathological queue sometimes actually even acute mi's if they present late they already have a pathological queue so a late presentation you will not uh, thrombolyze and that's why you need to get a clear history and the way to do that is to ask when the patient had the maximum intensity of chest pain bolbe je gotokal khete ke betha gotokal khete ke is not a clear cut you have to delve into the history and ask shobche beshi betha hoyse koy ta theke gotokal ke kokhon hoyse and you have to specifically ask when the maximum intensity chest pain was and calculate the timing whether to thrombolyze or not accordingly when go to kalke rate ekta chest pain a patient asche 10 12 mm acute but there was no ongoing chest pain so it's very likely that that was an old so there has to also be ongoing chest pain in order to thrombolyze there are many factors that you need to consider when uh, when deciding on thrombolysis I should. There is also a question here. I think. Yeah. 
should we prescribe the dact along with the river? Oh yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't see that. Sorry. Uh, in case of STEMI, should we prescribe dact along with during discharge? I, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. So I think because it is, uh, there is no very clear guideline on this. So everyone is doing it on a case by case basis. But if you should always assess the bleeding risk of the patient. So if the patient is of high bleeding risk and very lean and thin with a history of prior bleeding, then I would not give triple therapy that is dapped with river oxaban. But if it's allowable, then if the patient has come with COVID, not any STEMI, but a patient with COVID and STEMI, then we can uh, give a low dose river oxaban along with uh, the dual antiplatelet therapy because COVID is a procoagulable procoagulant state. But if the patient is a high bleeding risk case, then probably not. I'll just give uh, DAPT only maybe, not necessarily rivaroxaban. But, but that's a very difficult question and a difficult question. I mean, I need to question Kutti Chai Ji. I wish I was happy with the other one. Kita Hulu, Jodi bleeding profile at Kotha Bola Hoy, Shikhetri, Debiga Tran among Epic Zaban, it would a safety margin better. Yes, Jesus. And River of them. I mean, generically, river oxaban that I shouldn't have because apixaban, in fact, dwita dozo atse and it has a definitely more safer profile in uh, renal impairment and a safer profile in elderly. So, 2.5 BD apixaban is probably the the safest uh, no act to give. Yes, Jesus, I agree. मडारेट ना खराब हा that is true, Shetai. What's the question? Answer. If a patient comes with STEMI along with recent COVID positive on NOAC, should he be? Oh, very good question. Which one is better, TNK or STK? So the thing is, actually, patient on NOAC can be thrombolized. Amra to AF jara NOAC ke taki. Other ke to probably thrombolize kora jai because this is a STEMI, isn't it? I should think it can, but and TNK is always safer than uh, yeah. SDK. Bleeding profile, safety profile overall. It is actor din hoche. Jodi patient ke recent COVID ke recovery hoye thake. Ji. Tarle ta amar kitu ami chhara shoye thake kya tuve nilo bhoyer kichhu nai. Ji sir, shit nai. Exactly. Ji sir. Within two weeks er motte hoy ek symptom shuru two weeks er motte. Taole kitu amar safety problem ache. Yes, Jesus. Because if our body is separate, that means not that, then we should be thinking twice about doing anything other than doing thrombolysis. I am going to ask you a question, Corbo. Aisha. Yes, sir. Connect the place that, when we are comparing the two steps to connect the shot, it is a little bit better. Should we talk about it? Okay. Actually, I can. Tenecticlase is a bolus, so it's much easier to administer, and it is faster. And also, streptokinase, there is the the possibility of developing antibodies. So, because of that, it cannot be given within a certain period if the patient returns. Whereas tenecticlase can be given uh, many times, uh, even after that. And uh, in our experience, anecdotally. Um, Tenecticlase has also 
uh, when we take them to the cat lab like that is a practical experience that i can speak of there there is better uh, revascularization in terms of uh, less totally occluded coronaries among patients who have received tenecteplase than those who have not etai mane additional jeta boyer ba the anecdotal experience eh? the jeta bolte pari দেখি যে ফ্লোর লেভেল যদি এবং বলা হচ্ছে আমি শিওর না আমার রুগীটা কোভিড পজিটিভ কিনা আমি কোভিড এর চেষ্টা পাঠিয়ে দিলাম এক্ষুনি টেনেক্টিপ্লেস দিয়ে দিলাম তারপরে তিনি আমি কোভিড এর রেজাল্ট দেখে তাকে ক্যাথলেবে নিয়ে গেলাম ফার্মাকুইন বলা হচ্ছে ফার্মাকুইন রেজাল্ট এমনকি এই কোভিড এর সময় স্টাডি বলছে যেটা আমারও এখন একটা আইডিয়া তৈরি হচ্ছে ইস দ্যাট মেবি ইন আওয়ার রিসোর্স সেটিংস দ্য ডিফল্ট শুড বি ফার্মাকো ইনভেসিভ বিকজ ইভেন উইদাউট কোভিড সেটিং আপ প্রাইমারি পিসিআই unless the cat lab is active at that time and operator is available is definitely going to take greater than uh, 120 minutes in the night it is very rarely that you can make the time so especially when in the era of tenecteplase where it is so much safer and so much efficacious pharmacoinvasive might actually be the best idea even going forward irrespective of covid jeta our two cents opinion uh, there is there's another question i share Oh yes. Uh so if a patient develops cardiac arrest during thrombolysis with STK and intubated and then revert should we continue thrombolysis? Uh probably not because strep with streptokinase, right? So practically we generally and that's also a difficult question it would depend on a case by case basis it would depend on whether you're getting any on suction if there is a lot of blood it would depend on how much has been thrombolyzed if you have given like 70 to 80% i would probably discontinue it uh, but if nothing has been given at all maybe we can take a chance but ideally in in an arrest it's not probably not the best idea to continue i think i would request dr aisha to to get some key, key messages for the participants very like in very short in three or four sentence might be yeah so in terms of covid and ischemic heart disease as as i mentioned in the conclusion i think the key is to identify whether it is an acute coronary syndrome that needs to be managed immediately or whether it is something that can wait and to quickly assess the patient to see if it is a covid positive person under investigation a covid suspected or an unlikely to be covid because the triage of um, where you will put the patient after admission and how you will uh, plan your treatment strategy and how quickly you will need to act will all depend on this so i think assessing that in the emergency is something that's very important and that is what emergency medical officers should uh, be be adept at and in resource limited settings it's important to work with what you have so if you work in a primary care setup uh, to quickly identify what you can do for the patient if you don't have thrombolysis then give the dual antiplatelets give a low molecular weight heparin depending on the time you might take to transfer the patient and arrange for a transfer immediately because especially in acs because that is where uh, time is muscle Uh, and also i think uh it's important to be wary of not over treating because we need to that's why identify the masqueraders like myocarditis and the differentials and make sure that we don't uh treat something that is not there which is why it's 
so important to, as I said, do serial ECGs, work with the tools you have, do a troponin, use the anti-pro BNP and use all the information that uh, Monvers has spoke of yesterday to identify myocarditis, which is not uncommon um, with COVID as we have seen. And uh, to go with the common things commonly, because if it is an ST elevation, it's unlikely to be a myocarditis. So we should uh, ideally use our common sense also more than ever and uh, tailor that to uh, for our patients. And also when the patient is being discharged to make sure that clear advice is given because in this era of telehealth where patients don't want to visit hospitals unnecessarily for very good reason, it's important that when you have the opportunity to communicate with the patient, the communication is given correctly and uh, clearly. So thank you for the questions and for your attention today. আমার মনে হয় যে আমাদের যারা শ্রোতারা যারা আছেন তারা অ্যাক্টিভলি পার্টিসিপেট করলো যে প্র্যাকটিক্যাল কাজে কখন কি করবে সেটা বোধহয় একটা সিনারিও বা ডিসকাশন করায় সে ব্যাপারে সুবিধা হয় যত যাই বলি না কেন আমাদের আজকের এই যে ইনফরমেশন গুলো প্র্যাকটিক্যালি সেটা যদি আমি ব্যবহার না করি তাহলে কিন্তু কারোরই উপকার হলো না আমার এটা বিদ্যাই থেকে যাবে সে বিদ্যাটা কাউ কর্মে পরিণত না করলে সেটা জ্ঞানে পরিণত হবে না কাজে আমি যারা আজকে শুনছ ইয়াং ডাক্তার যারা আছেন যারা ভবিষ্যতে যারা আমার আপনার সবার ট্রিটমেন্ট করবে তাদেরকে বলবো প্লিজ মনোযোগ দিয়ে দেখো এই কোভিড কিন্তু চলে যাবে না থাকবে এই কোভিড দেওয়া পেশেন্টে হার্টের রুগীতে কিভাবে ট্রিটমেন্ট করব কি না করব সেটা কিন্তু তোমাদেরকে অংশগ্রহণ করতে হবে একটি ডিসিশন নিতে হবে এবং সঠিক ডিসিশন দেওয়ার সক্ষমতা অর্জন করতে হবে সেজন্যেই আজকের আলোচনাগুলো যেটা আয়সা চমৎকার ভাবে করেছে আশা করি সবারই কাজে লাগবে ধন্যবাদ শাহি আবারও ধন্যবাদ এমিনিয়েন্সকে এরকম একটা প্রোগ্রামের আয়োজন করার জন্য